Welcome to this short video on file activity monitoring. My name is Darren Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Net4.com. So why should you monitor file shares? Well, maybe you've got issues with employees deleting data, time being wasted as tapes are located and data is restored. Maybe you need to monitor sensitive data like finance or HR type data. Maybe you've got problems with wasted space in network file shares where disks are getting full in your servers. Or maybe you've got LAN and WAN issues due to large file transfers. There are also regulatory and industry compliance standards that you may have to adhere to. Things like the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, maybe sarbanes Oxley or things like PCI. Well here at Network.com we've developed a very innovative system that allows you to monitor Windows file shares without interfering in the operation of your network. And it operates by taking a snapshot of network traffic. It does it by using a span port. It stores this in a database, so it does the analysis and stores the results in a database. You've got browser-based analytics, you've got reporting, alerting. Key thing is there's no agents or clients required. So you don't need to install anything on your clients. You don't need to go near your servers installing stuff. You don't need to enable auditing on your servers. Everything, all the information is captured from network traffic. It has no performance impact on the network or on the servers. And you get a consolidated view of users, bandwidth, files, events, websites. So it's not just file shares. It can also give you visibility into what other things users are doing on your network. So let me show you what it looks like. So now I'm logged on to my network land guardian. And I'm going to investigate a couple of incidents that have occurred in this network. The first one is file has gone missing and I want to track back who deleted the file and at what date and time. So on the home page here, I've got an option to search by file name. And the file name I'm interested in is a sales forecast file. So I type in, you can type in part of the name. You don't have to type the whole thing in. The Langardian historical database, so it's not just current activity. You can also look at some, something may have happened in the past. Maybe a couple of days ago, maybe, maybe even something going back weeks. So you can just select the date and time here. I'm just interested in the last 24 hours. If I run the report, and I get back here the file that I'm interested in tracking, so Sales Forecast 2010. I then have the option here over towards the right to drill down. And I found here that actually, yes, the file was deleted from the network. At the top of the report, there's an option here then to show the report with your usernames. Because I do want to find out who did this, because it is causing a lot of hassle on the network. So Wendy here, she deleted the file on the 23rd of the 3rd at 1700. So I'm going to ring Wendy. She may have a local copy of the file on her desktop. Maybe she deleted it all together. We know what tape to get here if that's the time it was deleted. So we need to get the previous backup here on the 20, 22nd. So I have a, a record here of the file, who deleted it, date and time. The second instance I want to take a look at now is that I want to see that Wendy delete anything else off the network. So I'm just going to copy her username here and go back to the home page. So Sarah search by file name, we now have the app search by username. So we type in the username here, so we can actually just start typing in Wendy. And the Langardian will prompt you with all the, the users with their username starting with WN. Look at the last 24 hours, let's just take a look at what's happening here. Okay, so she's been accessing a lot of data on the network, a lot of files, technical documents, some financial reports as well, some sales. And we can drill down and we can see what date and time she accessed this. So shouldn't we really access that in finance there? Just open up some reports here, file read. So we do have a record here of every single file that this user has accessed on my file servers. The next incident I want to take a look at is we want to check for anybody sharing MP3 files around my network. Um, it's been some concern that maybe users are sharing mp3 files and using up a lot of disk space. So come look back here to search by file name. So the file name here, we're going to go with ends with, and I'm going to type in mp3. So look at the last 24 hours, run the report. Sure enough, we have some mp3 files moving around the network here. Let's get the username. So it's shown here from the finance department. So I want to drill down and see what server he's hosting those files on. So here it's on us, the finance server. We've also got the IP address of it there. So not too many MP3 files on my network. Easy enough task to clean these up. It just looks like one folder. But you can very quickly and easily check for any types of files 
type in something here like um, show me all spreadsheets dot x less and we get a list of all spreadsheets on our network back to the home page so there are just some of the very common things that are used or that the or Windows file share reports are used for so now let's take a look at what is involved for you to get the Land Guardian up and running on your network So let's take a look at what's required to set up file share monitoring using a spam port. Well, the first thing you need to do is sketch out where your file servers are plugged into your network. So in my case I've got three file servers and they all connect back to a single core switch. To set up file share monitoring on this network, first thing I need to do is download and install the Langardian software, install it onto a server or onto a system that has got two network cards. The first network card can connect back anywhere on your network. You can plug it into the core switch. It doesn't really matter. That's the management interface. The second port is the important one. This will be the span port. So you connect that back to the same core switch, the same switch where your file servers are plugged into. The next thing you need to do, because on my network, this is, happens to be a Cisco core switch, I need to find out what VLAN these are in. So in my case, Everything is in VLAN 1, so it's very easy to set up monitoring in this case because we're just going to monitor VLAN 1. If you don't have Cisco switches on your network, what you need to do is take note of the ports where your servers are connected. So what we'll do in that case is we can set up port mirroring rather than VLAN mirroring. Port mirroring involves copying data as it goes to and from the servers and a copy of the data since this span port here. Once the data comes to the span port, the Land Guardian analyzes that traffic so that you can see what files are moving around your network. So now that I've identified what port here, so I've, in my case we'll plug into port number 6. We've picked a port on the core switch. Let's now set up monitoring on the switch itself. Okay, so I'm now going to log on to my core switch here, which as I mentioned is a Cisco switch. Let's go into uh, enable mode. So first thing I want to do is check if there's any monitoring set up. So you can do that by just issuing the command show monitor. So I have one monitoring session set up here already. So I'm going to use monitoring session two. Second thing I just want to check is the VLAN IDs in use here. So just run the command show VLAN. So the one I'm interested in monitoring is the VLAN one here where my servers are. So that's fine. So I didn't go into configuration mode and issue these two commands. So we do monitor session to source VLAN one. Now you can just issue the command just like that there. My switch here, there's a limitation on it. So I have to put an RX at the end, but you don't need to type in RX for if you use Cisco switches, it's just there's some particular models that you have to type in RX. But most cases, just source VLAN one is sufficient. Next part of the command, monitor session two, destination, interface. In my case here, I plugged it into port six on my switch. So fast ethernet zero slash six. And that's it set up. So that's the switch now is in the copy of traffic in VLAN 1 to port 6 where the Land Guardian will pick it up, do the analysis and you can then find out who is accessing what in your file shares. So it's on end here with what our customers are saying. So this is Honda in Canada. They have a quote here. Land Guardian has provided us with insight to what, exactly what is happening on our network like no other product could. Capturing file share activity from the network level is a winning feature for us. So they just like the way we could capture file share activity from network packets or from the network level. If you want to get a Land Guardian up and running on your network, please visit our website www.netforge.com where you can download a free trial today. That's a fully featured trial. You get all the features, you got your Windows file share, all of that is built in and you got it for 30 days. You just need to get a system with two network cards, locate your file servers and set up a span port. Very quick and easy to get up and running, no interfering with your servers, no messing around with clients and installing software. Just install it on the server, set up your spam port, and you get instant visibility as to what's happening on your Windows file shares.
So thanks very much for taking the time out to watch this video today.